I think my biggest fear would be being left at the altar. And I always thought that that was just in movies where it's like, oh, someone gets cold feet and someone backs out of the entire wedding. But no, because this is my second time doing this video and there's more stories about runaway bride and grooms happening in real life, not just in the movies, which just confirms that it could in fact happen to me. It really could. So yay, yay, cheers. Hop on your hydration station. Let me know what's in your cup. And if you haven't taken a sip of water today, Please do, I care about you. Okay, hydrate. Cheers. Oh my God, I just see the first sentence. I was left at the altar. <gasps> we are hearing from the bride herself. We were together for six years at that point and engaged for four. There were no signs that it was going to happen. We'd get together on Sundays for barbecue and planning. He was so excited. He'd talk about how awesome it was going to be to have a small ceremony, then a picnic and a big bonfire. How we didn't really need any of that other stuff since our love was real. After an hour of waiting, it was obvious. He called me and said he just couldn't do it. I stood before everyone and explained that he got cold feet, but we can still have the picnic, which we did. I walked around in my wedding dress, joking about his cold feet. After all, after six years, I knew him well. Yeah, you know him well, clearly not, because you didn't know that he was gonna do this. So, maybe you don't know him as well as you thought he did. My ex's sister was getting married to this a-hole. He was a total a-hole and no one in the family liked him. He hid his pregnant ex-girlfriend from her for the first six months of their relationship and even said the baby wasn't his when it was. Great. Such a drama-filled relationship that we should have known the wedding was going to be wild. Two years into the relationship, he proposes, but doesn't want a big wedding, only family at the courthouse. She says, okay. The day of the wedding, he will not answer his phone. She calls him 50 times while her whole family is on standby, wondering if they should continue to get ready. Finally, he answers and says he cannot get married because his daughter's mother found out and is going to take the baby away. Great. So she walks back into the house devastated and says, okay, it is off. She then proceeds to cry and talk hella smack. Then a week later, I get a call where she starts off saying, Oh God, don't hate me. She's getting back with him. My response is, okay, what happened? The groom who jilted her came back and professed his love, of course. He wanted to go to a casino in Nevada to get married. She says, okay, so a secret trip is taken so just the immediate family can go. No, I know y'all heard that. At this point, everyone is wondering if the wedding is going to happen. We were sworn to secrecy and told not to answer our phones all weekend. She wanted to make sure if he called it off again, that no one would know. Girl, you deserve better. The wedding did take place that weekend, but six months later, the, the marriage was called off and the divorce was filed. Felt like I was in, yeah. That's, that's literally a freaking movie. Girl, come on now, know your worth, honey. That just makes me sad for you, that you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get married to someone who left me out the altar, lied about having a baby with someone. Like, give me a friggin' break. That's the man you wanna marry? I don't think so. Know your own friggin' worth, man. It's hard to feel bad for someone who does that to themselves, you know? It makes me sad that you don't know your own value. I attended a wedding where the bride was left at the altar. <sighs> Man, it was sad and odd. There was a pretty large audience. Soon enough, the time to start comes and goes. Everyone in the audience is sitting there waiting at least 30 to 60 minutes after the ceremony was supposed to begin. All with no official word from the wedding party or why there was such a long delay. Rumors started going around. People were saying that one of the groomsmen stained his shirt and a bunch of other stuff that indicated nothing serious. Okay, I don't think so. Finally, the bride's father's tears in his eyes, gets up on stage to announce that the groom has had a change of heart. Needless to say, it was pretty shocking, but he told everyone to go on ahead to the reception and eat full dinner because the food had already been paid for, so someone might as well enjoy it. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it, but the bride actually showed up at the reception and greeted everyone with a smile no less. The groom did not make an appearance. Bless her soul. What else do you do? All your friends and family are there. They're gonna be your support system anyway at that point. The food's been paid for. Play the DJ, you know, like DJ. Press play. Let's just have a freaking party. 
at that point. What do you do? My sister was left at the altar on her wedding. Oh my God, if my sister was left at the altar, I would just go up there and be like, girl, I got you. I got you. Like I would hold her hand all the way down that aisle to leave. I really would. I was about 13, her maid of honor. He just said no and walked out when asked if he would take her to be his wife. It was horrible after. He joined the army and got married like six months later and my sister moved back in with us. She stayed in my room and would cry herself to sleep every night for months. It's been 10 years and she's now married to a guy we all really love. Okay, I'd love to hear that she had a happy ending, but the thought of my sister being hurt like that, like I will get emotional. I really will. I love my sisters more than myself, literally. Anyways, oh my God. Joss, your sister's married and fine. Like, why are you gonna get emotional? <laughs> I was just thinking, what would be worse? Would you rather have them not show up on the wedding day or at the altar, or they show up, but they say no? Like, I don't even know which one would be worse. I guess maybe, no, both are awful. I wouldn't want you to say no, but at the same time, I wouldn't want to be ghosted and get no explanation at all, but the no, yeah, maybe, maybe you just hope they don't show up at that point. If they're gonna say no, why even show up, right? Oh, both are terrible. I wouldn't want either, but if we had to choose, which one would you guys choose? How would you want to be brokenhearted on your wedding day? <laughs> What a fun game we're playing. I was a wedding coordinator at a Catholic church in Manhattan. Our church was booked for a large wedding party from Connecticut. They told us to expect at least 500 people. Oh my God, my friend's wedding in a few weeks ago was 226 people and I thought that was a lot of people. As the bride and groom came from large Italian families. When the day of their wedding came, the only people who showed up were members of the groom's side of the family. It was odd because we had seen the bride the night before at the wedding rehearsal and everything seemed fine. But the next day, the bride and her party were no shows. The groom tried his best to keep his composure. In an effort to track down the bride, the groom had his friends and family and myself call anyone who might have a clue as to where she went. Minutes passed and eventually hours passed. The groom begged me to let the current party stay in hopes that his bride-to-be would show up. I let his party stay an extra 15 minutes before I had to kick them all out and prepare for the next wedding that afternoon. We never learned of what happened to the bride. Her absence remains a mystery today. I wonder, like the only thing I'm thinking of is like cheating. That's the only thing I'm thinking of is that maybe she found out he cheated and she was like, Pfft. and then all her friends and family were like, girl, we are with you. We're not going, we're in your corner. You know, let's get on the next flight and take you on your own honeymoon, you know? I'm feeling like it has to be something that significant for even the wedding party and family to be on board with like ghosting the wedding. There's gotta be like infidelity or something, right? What is that noise? Why do I hear birds? Am I tripping right now? Maybe. Anyways, the guy I was supposed to marry just didn't show up at all. He called all of his friends and family on his side and told them not to bother showing up because he wouldn't be there. Well, thanks for letting them know and not me. We waited around till about an hour after the wedding started and finally got a text message saying he wasn't coming. A text message. A text message. Oh, take your phone and shove it up your... So I got to look like a jerk by telling my family, oh, sorry, there won't be a wedding today. It was mortifying and to top things off my son was asking me why his daddy didn't want to marry mommy Very hard to explain that to a two-year-old. Well, you just really tell him that your daddy is a piece of shit. It's pretty simple actually daddy Not nice. That's what you freaking say. I'm just kidding. Just another reason why I should not be a mother my dad who was a father figure to let's call him Jay helped with the wedding plans and the ceremony. It was nothing special since they were a very poor family living in rural Mexico. My mom said that for once in his life, everything was clicking in place and nothing could go wrong. He stood waiting for her at the altar for an hour, wearing his fake smile that was slowly slipping away. We found out that she left him because she saw how manipulative and abusive his mom was and she couldn't live with such a person. Oh, but we couldn't communicate that? 
All the food that was prepared went to waste. Just a month after he had a confrontation with his mom saying how she was the one who drove her away and how he resents how badly she has mistreated him and his siblings. He ran away and nobody knew where he went. Eventually, my father located him and found out that he was here in the States and was currently living in New York. Oh my gosh, this is like a documentary. My dad contacted Jay, but Jay refused to give his exact location. He said he didn't want to associate himself with the family who scared away his love. My dad has tried many times to call him, but he never picks up. He'll talk only when he wants to, and to this day, we don't know where he is, but we know that he's in New York. My aunt still controls her children's decisions to this day. I'm a 50-year-old cousin who still hasn't married because his mom doesn't approve of any of the girls he brings. My dad's family is all kinds of messed up. That is so messed up. Up. so messed up. Even allowing someone as an adult to have that amount of control on you and your relationship, that's also a, like a problem in itself. Um, I feel like this could have been communicated better. If that's truly the only reason and the only issue in this relationship, I feel like we, like, why don't you two just run away together <laughs> away from his mother <laughs> and just be in your happy relationship? There's got to be more to it than that, right? That's tricky. Family stuff is so tricky. If you don't have a good relationship with your partner's family, oh, that would be a struggle. I'm still hearing birds. Like, guys, it sounds like someone's TV is so loud and they're watching, like, a nature channel. That's what it sounds like. You probably can't hear it, but I can. This is a hallway right behind this wall. I'm tripping. I hear it though. I'm gonna go investigate. Once I'm done filming this video, I'm gonna walk down the hall and just like pretend I'm walking down the hall because I'm curious. Now I'm hearing voices. <laughs> Anyways, my aunt was left at the altar. Her husband just basically never showed up for the wedding. They had been dating for almost two years and lived together for one of them. He was the one who suggested getting married. She described the experience almost like having a heart attack. Yep. One of the happiest days of her life turned into her worst nightmare. She has dealt with abandonment issues for years. Oh, and has seen many therapists. Her biggest problem now is she doesn't believe anyone actually loves her. She doesn't think she's pretty, nice, and rarely speaks. She used to be one of the most outgoing people I know. I still love her, but this was three years ago and I'm losing hope fast. TLDR, don't leave anyone at the altar, please. Honestly, come on. It's gonna take a lot for you to do that to someone. You know what I mean? Obviously you guys have both agreed to this. You've been planning this day. Money's been spent. People have committed. Invites have gone out. Like have the decency to tell me in private before and let's just cancel the whole thing. Like not on the day. To, you know I'm gonna be standing there. Oh, I can only imagine the mental issues you'd have after that because the next time someone proposes, you're gonna be like, okay, but are you actually gonna be at the altar? Like you're not gonna leave me? My wife's friend ran during mass. We sat there shocked, not knowing what to do or say. <gasps> do we just leave? What is etiquette? Is there even etiquette to follow? She came back after about 10 minutes after she and her mom got her wedding gown off and on again. Turns out after drinking greasy food and nerves, she was experiencing severe GI distress and didn't want to chance it. Years later, we still laugh. At the time, it was one of the most awkward things to sit through. Yes, I'm still happily married. She did tell the groom, but the rest of us had no idea until the reception. The bride is pretty blunt and that's how we all know what really happened. I guess that's a new fear for me because if you did not know, I have IBS. So with my luck, that would happen to me for sure. I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I have PCOS and IBS, so my stomach is like every day is an adventure and you never know what you're gonna get. I've been in the hospital many times for um, both circumstances, so I've never really thought about that. Do I just not eat? Because then I'll faint because I have a fainting condition. So hmm, maybe I just wear an adult diaper. <laughs> what do you do? Hold on, I need some water. My lips feel dry. Whoever's TV is blasting, I cannot wait to go in the hallway, you guys. I'm telling you, this TV is insanely, I have no idea how I can hear that. If you guys knew the layout of my building, it's crazy that I can hear someone's TV or something. Something's happening. I was about seven and was a flower girl with my sister for a wedding. It was being held in the garden of a country club in Los Angeles. Ooh, 
beautiful. Well, being as it's Southern California, no one expected bad weather. It began to pour. Oh, and the bride requested the wedding be moved indoors. The groom flipped, went on and on about how he was going to have an outdoor wedding, etc. The argument was so bad that the wedding was called off. I just remember it was really awkward and someone announcing it on the PA system as we all just sat in the banquet hall waiting for the rain to let up. The couple then married a month later in Vegas, but I have no idea how they're doing now. My guess is the groom was really drunk, but who knows? So I guess this technically isn't left at the altar because it's like, no, we're just canceling the wedding <laughs> because we got an argument argument about the weather, but they technically did not leave the altar. Well, they did. They left the entire ceremony. They, can't, they canceled it. I'm investigating. It's my neighbor. Okay, update. Ignore the lighting because it's going to be crap. Okay, so my neighbor, I went around the hall, around the corner, and they have, okay, lighting. You can do better than that. Holy smokes. Okay, 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 okay. How about this? Okay, quick update. It's my neighbor, and I could hear their TV, which was really loud, but I also heard someone on the phone, so I was hearing both of those things at once, and it is very freaking loud, okay, because they're like around the hall and around the corner. So it's crazy that I heard that. It was very loud. I just had to walk past the door. I was like, no. I don't know if the mic picked it up, but investigation over. Stay classy, stay sassy. Goodbye.